In the first part of this series on Crocoblock's Jet Engine plugin, we covered custom posts and custom post meta fields. We used the example of a real estate website to create some simple properties. In this second video in the series, we'll look at how to use Jet Engine's taxonomy feature to enable a simple yet logical method of grouping all of our properties together. Now, if you're new to the term taxonomy in WordPress, let me take a moment to explain what they are and why they are integral to building WordPress websites. At its most basic, taxonomies are WordPress's way of applying organization to your content through the use of common groupings. For example, grouping our properties by their type, houses, apartment, flats, etc. Now, if you've used WordPress before, you've more than likely encountered posts and the built-in feature for post categories and post tags. These are taxonomies and Jet Engine allows us to easily create our own custom taxonomies and then apply them to the built-in WordPress features as well as our own custom post types like the properties post we created in the previous video in this series. So now that you know what a taxonomy is, let's see how we create one using Jet Engine. So creating our first taxonomy is really simple. All we need to do is head over into Jet Engine and choose the taxonomies option. Inside there, we have a listing of all the currently created taxonomies. Currently, we don't have any, but it shows three key pieces of information. The name of the taxonomy, the taxonomy slug, and finally, the actions option. So let's go ahead and create our first custom taxonomy. So we're going to add new, and this gives us four different sections. We're going to go through each one of these in a little bit more detail, and throughout the process, we're going to create our first taxonomy. Now, if you didn't see the first video in this series, we set up some basic meta fields, created a custom post type. It was all based around properties. We're going to continue along that same line, and we're going to use a property type for our first custom taxonomy. So what do we have to do? First thing we're going to do is give this taxonomy a name. So we're just going to call this, in this example, property type. And underneath, once we click inside there, you can see the taxonomy slug is automatically generated. Now, as I said in the first video, whenever you're working with taxonomy slugs or any other kind of slug when it comes to WordPress, you can't use spaces, you can't use special characters. So anytime you want to use a space, you either put an underscore or a dash in there. And normally this will automatically do that for you. You can see it's automatically put the dash in between the words property and type. Next up, we have the post type. Now, all this really means is where do you want to link this taxonomy to? What custom post type, what post type, what built-in WordPress feature? You can link it to an individual post type or multiple post types and have this taxonomy associated with all of those. So all we need to do is click on there and you can see this will give us a full list of all of the different post types we can associate this taxonomy with. You can see we've got things like posts, pages, media, and so on. These are inbuilt features as part of WordPress. However, if we scroll down, you can see we also have properties, which is the custom post type we created in the first video in this series. And that's what we want to link this to. So we'll select that option. We're not limited to that. We can, if we want to, add it to additional post types. So we could click and we can say we want to associate this taxonomy with posts as well. And then anytime we make updates, we can link that through and it'll update and allow us to work with both properties and posts. So you're not limited to just one particular post type. However, in this example, we only want to associate it with our post type of properties. Next up, you've got the edit taxonomy meta box link. You can enable this if you want to, and this just allows you to edit the taxonomy information inside the actual post editing page. Just gives you a little bit more of an option if you want to add or edit any of these custom taxonomy entries. It's up to you. Personally, I generally tend to leave this disabled. In much the same way as labels work when creating custom post types with Jet Engine, they are also available for taxonomies, and much the same as with the post types, they are totally optional. Now, when it comes to the labels, much the same as we had with the custom post type, you can, if you want to, leave all of these completely and utterly empty. It's entirely up to you how you want to process this. Sometimes it can come in incredibly handy that you want to customize this. You might have a different language you want to work with or specific terminology. You can edit as many of these as you want to. As you can see, there are plenty of different options we can configure inside here. But for this example, we're going to leave this empty. But like I say, if this is something you want to set up for your own particular WordPress install, then by all means, go ahead and set up what's relevant to your particular project. The advanced settings panel has a lot of options and can really be overwhelming for new users. The good news is though, most of these features can be left exactly as they are by default. Now in this section, I'll cover some of the most common and most important features, but several of what I would consider more advanced and not something most users will need to use. So in this video, I won't cover those in more than a cursory way. But if you want to know more, drop a comment below and I'll do my very best to answer all or any of those questions. 
So now taking a look at the advanced settings, you can see most of the options are actually enabled inside you. And for most use cases, that's going to be perfectly fine. However, I'm going to briefly go over and touch upon some of the key ones inside you. There are some that I think are probably a little beyond this starter's guide, so I won't cover those in too much detail, but we will take a look at some of the key things. So let's just take a quick look. Is public, do you want to make this taxonomy something that's available only via the admin or is it something that you can see on the front end users? Now, for most cases, that's going to be the case. You're going to leave this enabled. Is it publicly queryable? In other words, can you query this if you're using search filters or filters, um, facets and things like that that allow you to filter the information? You can make this something that's not queryable if you want to. But again, in most use cases, you want it to be something that can be filtered and queried for ease of use. Do you want to show this in the admin user interface? So generally, you're going to want to make this available in the admin. But if you were working with a front end form only and you didn't want to make this accessible in the dashboard of WordPress, you could disable this if you wanted to. Again, we've got things like show in admin menu. Do you want to make this available inside the admin menu itself? And do you want to show this in the nav menu? So you've got things like these different options at the top where we can see we've got properties and so on inside there. You can make them available in various different parts of the dashboard of WordPress. Now show in the REST API. Now REST API, if you're not familiar with this, this is something I don't want to go into too much detail, but effectively the REST API when it comes to WordPress is information that comes from one website can be available in another website. And this can be really useful if you want to link information between different websites. So again, you can see this is something that's generally left enabled. But again, if you didn't want to, you can disable this. And I would say this is more of an intermediate advanced feature for most users. So leave it as it is if you're unsure. You can register query variables if you want to. So if you were running uh, queries and filters and so on, you could apply a custom query variable inside you. And again, this is something that I would say is intermediate advanced level. So we're going to leave that as it is without going into too much detail. For most use cases, you don't actually need to do anything with it. Same kind of thing goes for the rewrite. Do you want to rewrite the taxonomy? So this basically gets rid of the potential for handling issues. Again, leave that enabled for you if you want to. And the same kind of thing goes for the slug. If you wanted to rewrite that something different, you could do. So most of these options are a little bit more advanced. However, we do want to take a look at the hierarchical option. Now, if you're not sure what hierarchical means, all it is is you have parent and child items. So for example, you could have a taxonomy that is uh, location. And then inside location, you could have child elements, which could then be the counties or countries inside a specific location. So for example, you could have the UK would be the parent. And then inside there, you could have Wales, England, Scotland, and Ireland, which would be the child elements that would create something hierarchical. Generally, I would recommend if you're creating taxonomies, even if you don't want to use a hierarchy, I would enable this. More from an easy use point of view, if you've ever used tags and you've ever used categories when it comes to normal WordPress post types, you'll know that it's a bit of a pain having to try to remember what the tags are and start typing something in for it to filter and show you those. Whereas if you've got a normal category, because it's hierarchical by nature, even if you don't use it, you can see and you just simply just choose the check boxes. It's just something that's a lot easier to work with, in my opinion. So I pretty much always enable the hierarchical no matter what tool I'm using to create custom taxonomies. Finally, we have the description. So if you want to explain what a particular taxonomy is for, if it's a little bit confusing or just need some clarification, you can drop, drop a description inside there just for ease of use. When it comes to taxonomies, meta fields are generally more of an option over a necessity. They are there should you want to add some additional meta fields to a taxonomy and then use that additional information in your archive templates. Now, meta fields in the case of a taxonomy are purely optional. You don't need to include any kind of meta fields, but sometimes you're going to want to. So for example, with a property type, we might want to put a description that is associated with a property type, and then we'll create a template for our taxonomy. And at the top of that, we'll have an image that could be the featured image for this taxonomy and a description and so on. It can be very useful from an ease of use point of view. So it's very easy to add meta fields and it works in pretty much the same way as our custom post types that we saw in the first video. So let's create two new custom meta fields and associate this with our custom taxonomy. So let's add a new meta field. And as you can see, all the same options are available. So I'm not going to go through all these. These were covered in video one in this series. If you haven't seen that, I jump back and take a quick look to get familiar. So the first thing you want to do is drop in the label. So we're just going to call this property type description. 
click underneath and you can see that automatically creates the name ID for us. The object type, it's a field, so that's perfectly fine. Field type, we're gonna set this to be a WYSIWYG editor, just so it gives us a little bit of scope to have some styling and some formatting and so on inside there. And we'll leave everything else as it is. We'll add another meta field in, and this time we're gonna call this property type image. And this is gonna be our featured image for our property type. So again, automatically creates the name ID, field type or object type of field is fine. We're gonna change the field type and this time we're gonna choose the option for media because we want to upload an image. Got a value format so we can choose between media ID, URL and an array. It's only one image so we could use ID or URL. It doesn't really matter too much. We're gonna choose the media URL. Again, you can drop a description in, apply conditional logic or set a field width inside there. But that's basically our two custom fields associated with our custom taxonomy. So now we've set everything up and configured everything. We just need to hit the add taxonomy option and we now have a new custom taxonomy. Now that we've set everything up, let's take a look at our results of all our efforts. Okay, so let's just head over into properties and you can see there's our new property type, our custom taxonomy. We can click to open that up. And this is very similar to what you're probably already used to when you created any kind of taxonomy with WordPress itself. All those same options are there, including our extra options like our product description or property type description, which is a WYSIWYG editor. We already have a normal default option, so you could pick and choose between whichever one you prefer to use. But this gives us an example of how you can use extra information and a WYSIWYG editor to give us some more formatting options. And if we scroll down, you can see we also get the option for property type to add our property type image in there, which will be our featured image. So let's go ahead and just create a new section or a new property type. So we're gonna say this is going to be apartments. The slug will automatically be generated for us. There's the parent category. This is just allows us to create hierarchical layouts as I spoke about in the previous section. Description, we're gonna leave that inside there. We're gonna drop a little bit of text inside you and choose a featured image. So let's just pop that inside there, just some filler text and scroll down, we'll choose a property type image as well. You can see this shows us our normal media library. If we wanted to upload something fresh, we could do that. But for this example, I'm just gonna choose an image I've already got inserted and we'll add that. And we'll just say add new category and that's our new category inserted alongside our custom information for our property type description and also for our property type image. So now we've seen how to go ahead and add in our custom taxonomy. What about, how does this look inside the actual property section itself. Let's take a look. Let's hop over into properties. Let's open up one of our existing properties. We'll open up industrial way. And now what we can do is we can take a look at the new option, which is property type on the right hand side. We expand that out. Only apartment is currently available because I've only created one. So we can just select that option and we can update. And that's now added and linked the industrial way property type, which is our custom post type to our custom taxonomy, which is the property type we've just created. So that's pretty cool, pretty straightforward, hopefully. Let's hop back to our property listing. Now, at the moment, we've got a couple of really useful different columns inside our dashboard and the properties. However, we can't see what property type they are, and that will be really useful information. So to change that, we're gonna come back into Jet Engine, and we're gonna go back into our post types, which we covered in the first lesson in this series. We're gonna open up our properties custom post type, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll right the way down to our admin columns. Expand that, and we're gonna add a new admin column in. We're gonna call this property type, and where it says type meta value, we're gonna change that, and we're gonna say we're gonna put this to be a post term. Once we select that, you can see this now changes and says there's a taxonomy. So what do we wanna use for that? Well, we need the taxonomy slug to get this to work. How do we find that? Well, let's just hop back over into our list of taxonomies and take a look. As you can see, underneath our custom taxonomy list, there's our taxonomy slug. So we just simply need to copy that from there. We're gonna head back over and we're gonna drop that inside there. So we'll just paste that in and there we go. We can drop our column order in if we want to. So let's just say this is gonna be column three, for example, and we can put a prefix or a suffix if we needed to, but we don't need to in this example. We just need to update our post type and then we can hop back over and take a look at our property list. Let's just refresh our listing. And there you can see, there's our property type. And as you can see, we've now got apartments listed in there. So if we come back into city view, for example, and we apply a custom post taxonomy to that, we can apply that inside there. We'll update this 
hop back out to our listing and you can see now that's property type is set to apartment for both of those and as we add more custom taxonomies in we'll have more options inside there and more of these different properties will have different property types associated with them but you can see really really easy to integrate all of these different options together to create something more powerful using jet engine from crocoblock now we've looked at how to use taxonomies in jet engine you have a great way to start organizing your new custom posts to continue learning, click this link next. It'll help you get much more out of using Jet Engine. If you found this video useful, please consider hitting that thumbs up button as it really does help me out. However, if you didn't find the video useful, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice as that seems to work pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts and until next time, take care.